Hello everyone, welcome back to another MCR 3U1 video on chapter 2. Today we will cover sections 2.4 and 2.5 which look into simplifying rational functions and exploring the graph of these functions. Since the past couple of videos have been quite lengthy, I will break up the theory and the examples into two separate shorter videos. In this video we will cover the theory. Here is the chapter 2 outline and after watching the videos on today's topics, you can find extra practice questions on pages 1, uh, 112 to 114 and page 116. So let's get started. Looking at the success criteria for this lesson, overall we want to start getting comfortable working with rational expressions and rational functions. And by the end of the lesson, we should be able to note restrictions of rational expressions or functions. We should be able to simplify these expressions by factoring, and we should be able to find and understand holes and vertical asymptotes. So let's get started. Starting off with restrictions, let's look at what a restriction actually is. Restrictions for a rational expression are values for the variables that make the function or expression undefined, which means that it makes the expression uh, and it, put, it puts the expression in the form of a number over zero. And this zero at the bottom of the rational expression cannot happen. It means the function is undefined. So we need to find the values that make this happen. Those are the restrictions. Okay. Two things to note about restrictions is that there are values that make the denominator equal to zero. Right? Like as I said before, we, we have the function equals a number over zero, right? The denominator equals zero. The restrictions are the values for the variable that make the denominator equal to zero, like, like here. And the second point is that the values that we find that are the restrictions are not in the domain of the function because the function cannot be undefined. So a vertical asymptote appears at these x coordinates, which we will cover later on. We will see where uh, how to find these vertical asymptotes and what they look like on a graph. So let's look at an example. We have f of x equals 3 times x minus 3 all in brackets times x minus 7 all in brackets all over 4x times x minus 2 all in brackets times 2x minus 1 all in brackets times 3x plus 2 all in brackets. And the question asks, what values make this function undefined? So from here, we know that we need to look for the x values that make this function, right? That put this function in the form of a number over zero. So what values of x, right, make the denominator zero? So that's what we need to find, right? So from this denominator right here, we don't need to worry about the numerator, right? Because if the numerator equals zero over a number, then this just equals zero. It's not on the fine, it's just zero, right? So we just need to worry about the denominator. So what values of x make this denominator undefined? Well, we have four factors, right? Which are multiplied by each other. So we need to find what x value in each factor makes that factor zero, because that factor, if it's zero, multiplied by anything else, it will still be zero. So let's take the first factor, 4x. What value of x? makes 4x equals to 0. Well, if we divide by 4 on both sides, we cancel out this 4 and we get x equals 0. So that's our first restriction. If x equals 0, then the denominator over here is going to equal 0, right? Because 0 here multiplied by everything else is going to give you 0. And it will make the function undefined. So we have the next factor, x minus 2. What makes x minus 2 equals 0? Well, if we add 2 to each side, right, we get these two to cancel out. We have x equals 2. There's our second restriction. We got 2x minus 1. 2x minus 1. What makes that equal 0? What x value? If we add 1 to each side, we get 2x plus, uh, and 1 over here. And if we divide by 2 on each side, we get x equals 1 over 2. That's another restriction. And lastly, we have 3x plus 2 equals 0, right? If we subtract 2 from each side, we get 3x equals negative 2. 
And if we now divide by 3, we get 3x equals negative 2 over 3. So our four restrictions of x are 0, 2, 1 over 2, and negative 2 over 3. So in the domain, x can equal any number, but x, right, put like a little box over here, x cannot equal 0, well, I'll start with the negative first, negative 2 over 3, 0, 1 over 2, or 2. So if you're writing it as a domain, the domain is that x is an element of all real numbers, but x cannot equal to negative 2 over 3, 0, 1 over 2, or 2, right? They're not in the domain, and that means that there is a vertical asymptote at these x values, which, again, we'll look at in the next couple of slides. Let's move on to simplifying rational functions by factoring. Step one, we want to factor the numerator and denominator, which make it easy for us to divide out common factors, find restrictions, locate holes and asymptotes, and we'll just make our expression much simpler in general, right? So here we can see that the numerator is 20t cubed plus 15t squared minus 5t. And we common factor out 5t. And then we factor this trinomial and we get 5t times t plus 1 times 4t minus 1. And on the denominator, we have 5t squared minus 10t. And we factor out a common factor of 5t. And we are left with a 5t times t minus 2, right? So that's step number one. Step number two, over here, we can see that we can factor out a 5t, but that's not step two. Step two, we want to find the restrictions first. Because if in the question, if we just factor out this 5t, then when we come down here, we don't have this. And But x equals 0 cannot exist in the function because x equals 0, if we have this function right here, will make the denominator 0. If we don't have that 5t there, we can't see that. So before we common, we uh, divide out any common factors from the numerator and denominator, we want to find the restrictions. So in this example, for 5t to be 0, right? divide five, uh, each side by 5, t is going to equal 0. And here, t minus 2 equals 0. Add 2 to each side, and t is going to equal 2. Right? So these are our restrictions. t cannot be equal to 0 or 2 which we have up here, right? We have noted the restrictions. Finally, for step three, we simply want to cancel out any common factors. So here, again, like as I said before, we common factor out the 5t, and we get left with this final expression. When we do this, we will find holes, which we will cover in the next slide. But once we factor out a 5t and a 5t, we actually get a hole at t equals 0, right? Which I'll cover again in the slides to come. So now moving on to holes and vertical asymptotes. And in general, let's explore the graphs of rational functions. Firstly, a hole occurs at restricted values when the factor in the denominator is also a factor in the numerator, right? If it occurs in the denominator and the numerator, right? What it means is that we can cancel out a common factor from the numerator and the denominator, and whatever value makes that factor equal to zero, there will be a hole in that x location on the function. So if we have an f of x, right, equals whatever, some numbers, some numbers, times x minus 2, right, if these are a bunch of other factors, times x minus 2 over a bunch of factors, times x minus 2, right, we can cancel out an x minus 2 from the top and bottom. And whatever makes this factor of x minus 2 equals to 0, which in this case, if we add 2 to both sides, we can get that x equals 2 makes this factor equal to 0, there will be a hole at x equals 2 on the graph. So if we have a graph of this function right over here, let's say something weird like that. This is f of x. At x equals 2, let me erase this graph. We have a hole like this, right? And the graph just keeps going. But here, there's no value. There's no x value or y value. It's just an empty space. And we can um, write it like this on the graph to notify that there is a hole at x equals 2. Okay? So 
So let me erase all this. Okay, and now we'll do an example. This example says simplify f of x equals x squared plus 7x plus 12 all over x plus 3 and state any holes. Okay, so step one, as we said before, we're going to factor the top and the bottom. The top looks like a simple trinomial, right? So we need to find two values, r and l, and r and l need to add to 7 and multiply to 12. So what values r and l multiply to 12 and add to 7? That will be 4 and 3. So x, and then we put in this form of x plus r and x plus, uh, x plus l. So r can be 4 and l can be 3, right? And if you expand this out, we'll get x squared plus 7x plus 12. And the bottom stays as, as it is. Put some brackets around it. And now here, we can see that we can factor out an x plus 3 and an x plus 3, right? And once we do that, we get left with an x plus 4. That's it, over 1, right? But you don't have to add that. And if we put a comma here, we can say that x cannot equal negative 3. That's how we usually notify that there is a hole at x equals negative 3, because we can't really see, right, that uh, that factor of x plus 3 in the final function. So we just add a comma and we say x cannot equals negative 3. And we can say that therefore, there is a hole at x equals negative 3. Because again, if you take this factor, what makes this factor equal to 0? Well, let's see, x plus 3 equals to 0. If we subtract 3 from both sides, we can get x equals negative 3. So there we go. At x equals negative 3 in the graph, right, there will be a hole at x equals negative 3, like that. Okay? Cool. After we simplify the rational functions into factor form, we can find where, where vertical asymptotes occur for that function. Vertical asymptotes occur at the restricted values in the denominator. So for the, va for the values of the variable that make the denominator equal to zero, there will be a vertical asymptote at that x value location on the graph of the function, which is represented as a dashed line like this, vertically. So if we have an f of x, right? And there's a bunch of factors up here all over a bunch of factors times x minus 2, right? The x value that makes this factor 0 is, if you add 2 to both sides, to 2, right? So on the graph of the function, we will have a graph like this. It might go up or maybe it might go down. But at x equals 2, there will be a dashed line indicating the vertical asymptote because the x value of 2 will make this function undefined so we can never have that x value in this function and therefore it will not be in the domain and therefore the graph of f of x will never touch that x equals 2 line right it might go around it it might go like this but it will never touch it okay come on let me erase all this now, let's look at an, a quick example. It says, state the vertical asymptote of g of x equals 5 over x minus 8, all in brackets, times 2x plus 5, all in brackets. So, again, let's see what values of x makes the denominator equal to 0. And at these x values on the graph, we will have a vertical asymptote. So, this uh, function is already factored for us. So, we just need to see what makes this factor equal to 0 and this factor equal to 0 which again, it's pretty easy by now. You can just say x minus 8 equals to 0. If we add an 8 to both sides, plus 8, plus 8, cancel these out, and x will be 0 plus 8, which is 8. Right? That's 1. And then now 2x plus 5 is going to equal to 0. If we subtract the 5 from both sides, we get 2x and a negative 5 over here. If we divide by 2 on both sides, these cancel out we'll get left with negative 5 over 2. Therefore, there are two vertical asymptotes for 
this for function f of x at x equals negative 5 over 2 and x equals 8. All right, so on the graph at x equals 8 and at x equals negative 5 over 2, there will be dashed lines like this. And the graph won't touch those lines. It'll go kind of around it, maybe down like that, but it won't touch it. Okay. Here we can better visualize holes and vertical asymptotes in the graphs of rational functions. In the first image over here, we can see that there is actually a hole at x equals 2. And also a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3. Right. And the other one, this one going side to side is a... A horizontal asymptote which we won't get to in this lesson but I can explain in this example kind of why it happens so let's just stick to the hole and the vertical asymptote in this example um, at x equals 2 right there is a hole so if we have a function of f of x right for this graph this graph is a function of f of x that function its expression is gonna have a bunch of factors on the top and an x minus 2 and a bunch of, of uh, factors on the bottom, on the denominator, sorry, I meant to say uh, factors here, uh, times x minus 2. Then these two, uh, two factors will cancel out, and we'll get the expression f of x equals a bunch of factors over a bunch of factors, where x cannot be equal to 2, right? And we'll have a hole right here at x equals, uh, x equals 2. And for the vertical asymptote, this function, right, we also have, I'll actually write it up here, we also have a bunch of factors, let me make this longer, right, a bunch of factors, and it will have on the bottom an x equals 3, or an x plus 3, my bad, right, because an x value of negative 3 will make this factor a 0, which will make the whole denominator value 0, and that's why we have a vertical asymptote right here, because an x value of negative 3 cannot happen with this function, because it will make the function undefined. The second image shows the graph of the function 1 over x, right? This is the function of this function 1 over x. And we can clearly see that an x value of 0, right, will make the function undefined. Because if you plug in x equals 0, you will have 1 over 0 which is undefined. Oh. Right. So there's a vertical asymptote at x equals 0 for this graph. And there's no dashed line here, but I'll draw it in. So this graph will keep on going, 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 but will never touch x equals 0. It will go to the smallest number possible of x, but it will never touch x equals 0. And we haven't really gotten into horizontal asymptotes yet. But we can see that there is a horizontal asymptote here as well, along this line, along the line of y equals 0. And this is because if you look at this function right here, there's no possible x value, right, that'll make f of x, aka y, equal to 0, right? So no matter what x value you plug in here, you will not get 0, right? And therefore, we have a vertical line at y equals 0 because it won't be possible ever. Okay, thank you so much for watching and the next video we will cover a few examples using the theory we just learned and again keep practicing and I'll see you guys in the example video.